Who's going to the water? Well, it's going to take a little bit for the water to get in the shower. You want to get in the shower? officially right now I'm just hubby and I oh, hubby's over here in the mirror he was helping me time my contractions um we're using this app wait a second okay so if you're wondering what happened to the rest of the video before we get into the full video um I have to share a disclaimer um, viewers discretion is advised um, if you are sensitive to birth or anything birth related you may not want to watch this video um, and honestly I went back and forth of whether or not I wanted to share this birth film initially I thought yeah I'm definitely gonna share my birth film honestly um, but then <laughs> after re-watching what actually occurred I was like no, I'm not sharing this, but I was told that, you know, it's, it's a good idea to share it. It's raw. It's real. Everybody's birth story is different. My birth story may not look like yours and vice versa. And so I decided to just go ahead and share it. But before I share it, I wanted to give a little bit of backstory because everything happens so fast and what you're about to watch is basically what occurred towards the end pretty much what you're gonna see is pretty much just the birth happening and after nobody had any time you guys to plan either myself my husband my birth team which included my midwife my doula um videographer and all of that we had sometimes no time <laughs> we had okay wait, let me do that over we had absolutely no time to plan, you guys, okay? Um, I had what was called a precipitous birth, which means that you barely labor, right? Typical laboring time, especially for a first-time mom. Uh, for me, I'm a first-time mom. Uh, you labor at least eight, 16 hours, right? 20 hours. Some people labor for 40 hours, 60 hours, right? Y'all, my labor was maybe like three three to four hours and I barely knew that I was technically like in labor right I wasn't even really I did not have the whole laboring experience where you know it's like um early labor and early labor and then active labor or like I was planning on going through the whole shebang right I was thinking that I was going to be in labor for at least 16 hours right? Because that's the norm. You guys, my story was not like that. And I'm not mad at it, honestly, okay? I'm actually really happy that I did not have to labor for a long time. And so I'm just going to share with you a little bit of backstory before you guys watch the actual raw, real birth video. Okay, so I won't make this story too long because I know you guys want to watch the actual birth film. Mm -hmm. um, but what basically happened was, um, first of all, let's talk about the day before. How about that? <laughs> so yeah, the day before I went to do um, a pedicure, which they say that do getting like massages and like pedicures is good for uh, inducing labor, naturally inducing labor. So I was like, okay, I'm four days away from my actual due date um, for a bit of context. This was a Friday. My due date was that following Wednesday. And so I decided to get a pedicure, just relax. And I decided to get some sugar, um, sugar waxing or basically sugar hair removal. I'm so happy that I found um, this lady. She's so holistic. Shout out to you, Nikki. Her service is just phenomenal. But that's beside the point. She's more holistic, right? And at the end of the service, she was like, sp she was spraying my underarm with myrrh. Or she started to. And she was like, oh, no, I forgot that this actually induces labor or it, it can help induce labor. And I was like, no, spray me away because I'm like four days away from my due date. Um, but prior to all of this, you guys, I was praying for a supernatural, God bless you. I was praying for a supernatural um, birth, right? I was praying for a peaceful birth, uh, a, a more natural birth in regards to, I did not want to have a medicated birth. I didn't want any epidural um, for various reasons and all the side effects that, comes with it and you know things that can go wrong and all of that I just wanted to be completely in tune with my body what was happening with my body and I wanted to feel the entire experience of my birth so I did not want that I didn't want to be induced I did not want any 
Pitocin. I just wanted a completely unmedicated uh, birth. My birth plan was also that I did not birth in the hospital. Baby's over here. Probably going to have to get him. <laughs> he was cute. Now he's awake. <laughs> yeah, initially I had planned on giving birth at one of the most, like, if not, you know, most reputable hospital uh, in the area, right? Or in the state, actually, <laughs> not just in the area, but in the state of Texas. And I was working with an OB initially. And in towards the end of my second trimester, I decided to scrap that and switch to a more holistic um, birth. So this is something that I thought about from the beginning and even before my pregnancy. But because of fear, I was like, oh, let me just stick to the hospital, stick to what's the norm. Mm -hmm. But after doing a lot of research during my pregnancy and some of the things that I experienced, honestly, you know, seeing uh, seeing a regular OB and all of that, all of the statistics and, you know, things that I was reading up and researching on and stories that I was hearing about, you know, you know, black women giving birth in hospitals and all of that. I'm sure you've probably have heard some stories. If not, you know, let's leave it there. But I decided to switch to a more holistic birth plan. And I was believing God for a water birth, uh, an unmedicated birth, a peaceful birth, a birth that was not deemed like painful or traumatizing or anything like that. And I know it sounds crazy to say that, you know, to, to believe for a pain-free birth somewhat, but that's just something that I was believing for. And, and in fact, God is, it's funny how God works because he was showing me how possible it is because a couple of girlfriends that I've had who gave birth right before me, like a few weeks and a couple months before me, they had beautiful birth stories. Their birth stories weren't traumatizing or anything like that. God was just reminding me that this is possible once I trust in him, once I trust my body. And once I believe that, you know, my body can do what it was designed to do. Birthing is a natural experience, it's a natural thing, it's not an illness. And you know, oftentimes the hospital treats it as if it's this illness or you know, medical emergency, even when it's not a medical emergency. So in a nutshell, those are some of the reasons why I decided to completely switch my birth plan. And I'm so happy that I did because it was a whole different experience, you guys. Basically my birth plan was either giving birth at home or at the birth center. If you're not familiar with what a birth center is, birth center is, it's like an in-between of, you know, the home or the hospital. It, you feel like you're at home, how it's set up. It feels like a home, like you're in an actual house and it's very private. It's pretty much just your birth team and, you know, your partner, your family members, who's, whosoever you want at your birth. It's not like the hospital where there's lights everywhere, there's beeping everywhere, there's people, there's nurses coming in and out of the room telling you to sign all these things and, you know, bothering you and all of that. It's nothing like that um, when you give birth at a birth center. Back to the day before you guys, I know I'm a little bit off track a little bit, but I really wanted to give you the bigger picture, just a bit of backstory, right? I got my uh, sugar hair removal, uh, service done and then I got a pedicure and then when I got home I asked hubby to give me a foot massage <laughs> and then y'all when he got to the right foot I was like this is it you remember that day yeah, I, remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was like this is it I like it felt so good I was like I felt like this was going to like get baby here like literally that's how I felt so that was like Friday night it's and like 12 o'clock yeah midnight um, but during the week, I was saying, wasn't I saying to you, we were joking because you were like joking about when the baby's coming because, um, you know, baby was due like that following Wednesday. And you know how it is where, you know, babies don't necessarily come the exact on the exact due date. It can they can come two weeks before or two weeks after. And so I was jokingly saying, you know, he's going to come on Saturday. Right. And <laughs> we went to bed late that night, like around 12 or something. And then 4 a.m., I started feeling stuff like in my stomach. I just felt like I needed to use the bathroom, honestly. So I got up, used the bathroom, went back to bed, and I felt water. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I think my water broke. I was wondering if I was being on myself because, uh, you know, that's normal for pregnant women to kind of trickle a little bit because you can't really hold your pee that much. But during my pregnancy, my entire pregnancy, I was able to hold my pee well. So I was like, I don't really think this is pee. And so I went to the bathroom again and got back in bed and y'all, a whole gush of water in the bed. I was like, oh my goodness. So I woke 
Mm-hmm. I, I woke hubby up and I was like, I think my water broke. Mm-hmm. And then I went to the bathroom and we turned on all the lights and everything. And indeed my water did break. It was the whole bloody show. Um, what they call it, if you're new to this, <laughs> it's basically where I guess the mucus plug uh, detaches, which means... Mm-hmm. Okay, so my doula gave us this app to use to time Mm -hmm. our contraction because apparently uh, the hospitals do this too where they suggest that you get to the hospital when your contractions are at least 411. Every hospital may be different. It may be 511, 711, I don't know. But for us, it was 411, meaning if your contractions are four minutes apart and if it lasts for a minute and if if it lasts for a minute and goes on for an hour. Is that right?
And he's like, I heard that, y'all, but I completely zoned out. Because <laughs> I was like, there's no way I'm having this baby in a car, okay? Oh, <laughs> there's no way this is happening. So I was just in my zone. Like, I'm like, Lord, get us to this birth center. Like, mm -hmm. get us there.
step over splinters of the moon. Golden, golden thing. 